Okay, um, I'm Ed Wright, and I uh, do the harpsichord work here in this corner of the shop. I've got a uh, built-in bench, which oftentimes, uh, if a bench was attached to the building, uh, it often wouldn't even be counted as part of the loose furniture. It would actually be considered part of the building. But I do have a separate bench and also a table for storing uh, finished harp supports. Right now, my work is on the assembly of the guide system for the plucking action of the instrument. It's a series of blocks that have been sawn and chiseled and routed out with a hand router, basically a router plane, so this way I can regulate the depth each of those cuts and these grooves on both sides of the block have been laid out geometrically so that when they are glued together they will form these mortises and I can show you here just in place and so they're glued up one after the other after the other to make a line of 61 holes. That's how many strings will be in the typical English spinet of our time. Running to about, about 32 inches in length. Once I have them all glued up and measuring carefully along the diagonals so that I don't end up too long or too short. You can always make subtle adjustments as, as as I go along. Then all of this will be cut down to look like this. And then the jacks, which are the actual plucking pieces, this is a rough one here, fit in these holes and they bob up and down. And to show you what this looks like in the context of an actual instrument, let me take you over here to a newly finished instrument. <clears throat> now you can see here the row of mortises, a series of jacks. Put one in, and the jack sits on the key. And when you press the key, it lifts and plucks. So this register, this series of mortises, is one of the most critical pieces for the entire layout of the string band, the keyboard. Everything starts with that. century writing desk that I'm building. And the base molding is actually really mainly a big cove. Um, it's something like that. Doing it in walnut. And I'm just now getting rid of most of that material uh, from the squared blank where the, where the cove will actually be. I tend to do all of my work right here at this bench, whether it's planing moldings, planing boards, flat, uh, sawing, cutting dovetails, uh, carving. Um, and in the, the British tradition, each worker owned their own tools. Um, so you kind of keep track of your own tools, keep them sharp, keep them organized, keep them out of other people's hands. Uh, adjust your bench to your own height and, and, and your method of working. Uh, the, the big cove molding that I've got going right now come right above these uh, bond feet that I just turned the other day um, so those plug up into the bottom of this this escritoire so the typical you know, what a lot of folks would call William and Mary style piece which is kind of fun to do and it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a side trip for us it's, it's a lot earlier than the furniture that we, we typically make 
1707 piece, so not the typical 1750s through mid-70s uh, work that we're doing. Hi, my name is Brian Weldy. Um, uh, I've been here for seven years, and currently I'm working on um, two different projects. I've got three chairs that I need to do, and this block front piece. Uh, one of the interesting things about this is that the drawer fronts are actually stepped so they have to be cut out of a uh, two and three eighths inch thick piece of walnut and all of this material has to be removed to get that uh, swelled front shape. I'm also working on another aspect of this. This particular piece also had um, uh, quarter columns so I'll be showing you a little bit of uh, lathe work. So this is turned out as one large piece and then will be split apart. There's a paper joint in between them. And so we end up with uh, columns for the outside of this, right like so. And I also have um, three chairs, and we'll be uh, dry fitting uh, one of them together. I'm Corey Loftheim, supervisor of the cabinet maker shop. Um, and as mentioned before, this is the British shop. These are our British tools, um, made by British manufacturers, principally in Sheffield and London. Um, even the bench is distinctive um, and is going to be significantly different from what you'd find at the very same time in the continent in France and Germany. This, uh, the broad uh, jaw of the bench vise, the deep skirt to allow for this, this clamping device known as a, a hold fast. pattern of holes we've seen in a couple of paintings of British shop interiors and it's also illustrated uh, in a book uh, by Nicholson in 1813. I am currently dressing up parts to replicate a treadle lathe, uh, the original illustrated here by Nicholson in 1813. There is a, a replica lathe uh, along the lines of what you see illustrated here, uh, used by the wheelwrights currently back behind the, the armory where the blacksmiths are, are set up in Williamsburg today. The material here is, is beech and oak. Uh, it actually would be nice to get someone else to make this lathe for me so I could get back to furniture, but uh, by summer we'll all be busy again with preparing parts principally for our upcoming symposium uh, in the following January. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share the shop with you um, and hope next time you're through this part of the south that you come by and visit. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you'll find free video tutorials, buying guides, workshop tours, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to receive my regular blog posts and YouTube videos, and don't forget to check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!